This video is brought to you in part by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your support. Hi folks, today we're taking a special trip to our neighboring town. I have a friend that's a science teacher at a private high school and they have a pretty nice aquaponics setup. And they're getting ready to shut it down for the summer, so we're going to adopt um, all their goldfish. His plans are for the uh, next school season to start up a system and grow a tilapia and grow them out over the school year then harvest them at the end of the year. So they'll be allowed to uh, shut down the system uh, during the summer. And uh, with the goldfish, since they don't want to eat them, they just need a place to uh, get rid of them. And since uh, we grow uh, the goldfish and the koi, uh, they'll be right at home in our uh, setup. So in a little bit we'll get there and we'll show you the system that they have. Alright, here we are. Oops. This is what we're looking for. been doing here. So uh, the Helios project, uh, as much as possible, is the building of the greenhouse, followed by the design and building of all the aquaponic systems that are in here by students. Uh, the project name, Student Arrive. Our website, uh, helios.comfortschool.org, student built. Uh, and as much as possible, students are involved in running the systems. Uh, we have Helios Project interns who do kind of community service to come in and monitor the water, uh, check the levels of uh, nutrients, pollinate plants, harvest plants. We just had a big harvest in here about an hour ago. So uh, this all began about five years ago. Uh, and the students were assigned the task of design and build an aquaponics system that we could expand into a greenhouse when we get it. Uh, and so this was the system that they designed. Uh, two media beds, each with a bell siphon, draining into a sump tank. Uh, and then a, uh, a 70 gallon tank. Right now we have goldfish in it. We had tilapia in it last year. Uh, automatic feeder that drops food twice a day. Uh, in fact, we just weighed the fish and recalibrated the feeder uh, based on 2% of the fish's body mass. Uh, we then, once we got the greenhouse, uh, and the metal frame of the greenhouse was built by students uh, as a class in the fall term about three years ago. And when the metal frame was done, we hired the pros to come in and put the skin on because it would take too long. But then they started designing uh, systems. And so the first system that they designed, we actually are right now on building our second system. This is the brand new one right here. Uh, it has just finished cycling. And uh, in about a week, we will actually take it down and we won't run it during the summer because nobody's going to be here. Uh, but if we look at this system, uh, it's a lot like the system over there. We have two media beds, two media beds, we've got a fish tank, gravity fan in this case, and then instead of a sump tank we have a deep water culture uh, system that ultimately, you know, will go with lettuce and cilantro and basil are the three most popular things that we grow. Uh, this system is brand new. We have a second system so that now with two systems we can come in and do controlled experiments. Uh, and so uh, the students right now are working on building a third system uh, that will replace that one. This is a passive solar greenhouse. Uh, it is a product of uh, Cirrus greenhouses in Boulder, Colorado. 
And we chose it because it was something that we thought our students could build. Uh, they initially worked on understanding the design. They built scale models of it and uh, worked on trying to understand how do all the parts of this greenhouse work together to make it passive solar. And so uh, the back wall of the greenhouse is four inch uh, thick uh, metal coated foam pallet. Uh, the, uh, the roof is facing south and the students chose this spot by doing a sun diagram and figuring out that this spot has no shade at any time during the year, uh, any day of the year, except for wintertime, a little bit of shade passed on the east side uh, when the sun first comes up in the morning. But otherwise, it's wide open. Underneath the concrete floor, we have a ground air heat transfer system. And we can see uh, if you look, we have pipes, and we have four of them. And uh, these four pipes, there's one here, and there are three more going all the way to the other end. They have an open top, and so during the day, when the temperature in here gets above 70 degrees, a fan kicks on here, and it pulls air down from up there, hot heated air, and it goes down underneath the concrete floor, and we have four feet of gravel. And then it comes out and vents. And we have a vent here, the air is coming out because the fan is on. And we have two more vents. One here, one here, and then another one in the corner. And each two of these vents are venting uh, air from pipes to either at two feet or another pair are venting air from the pipes going uh, at four feet down. And so uh, this really for us serves the purpose in the wintertime of helping to reduce the amount of heat we need to use to heat the greenhouse, uh, but it also helps control the humidity in the wintertime when the greenhouse is closed up tight. It does a pretty good job at both of those. We do have supplemental heating. We have radiant floor heating uh, in the concrete floor. And we installed that because it made the most sense uh, cost-wise. Our school has a cogeneration plant powered by natural gas. It reduced our carbon footprint by 50% when we put it in and drastically reduced our fuel bill. And so we pulled water, hot water, that's used to heat all the campus buildings. We pulled hot water out of the library and it runs through here and then the cold, cooled water returns back to the library to go back to the system to be reheated. Uh, since we put the greenhouse in, there's been no detectable increase in the amount of heat that's delivered by the system. It hasn't seemed to have increased the amount of uh, fuel consumed by any measurable amount. So that tells us the greenhouse, as a passive solar greenhouse in the winter, is working pretty well. Uh, it's very comfortable in here in the winter. We keep it around 60, 62 degrees uh, through the winter. Uh, we do use some supplemental heat for the fish tanks to keep down at a comfortable 65, 68 degrees. So I think, I think that's it. Uh, visit us at helios.pompertschool.org and feel free to send me an email through the email listed on the website. Great, thanks, Bill. Thank you. So on the left, you had digital graphics. In the middle, you had the photography students. And on the right, you've got painting and drawing. So they all started with uh, photography students taking different pictures in the greenhouse. And then they handed over the photographs to the painting and drawing students who painted on top of their, added their thing. And then the digital graphics kids modified the pictures using their computer techniques to sort of make them look unique and different in color. Turn around. Yeah. There, there he goes. goes. He's fine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's Maybe he's like a shark and sort of goes numb when he's upside down. Yeah. <laughs> All 
Alright, so I'm heading back now after we have our fish. It's only about a 20 minute ride, so I'm not overly concerned about uh, having them oxygenated. So there's no air stones or anything in those. And they're divided up to about uh, 10 or 8 to 10 fish in each tank. So they'll have no problem surviving uh, the trip home. And then uh, we'll just get them dumped in. The uh, pH between uh, their system and mine is almost identical. Um, so I'm not overly concerned about shocking them and the temperature's gonna be about the same. So I'm planning on just uh, dumping them right into the tank. Um, and they're also very healthy. I've checked on them and uh, no signs of disease or anything like that. So uh, normally I would uh, quarantine fish like this, um, but since I know the source of them and the uh, owner has kept good tabs with their inventory. You know, haven't had any deaths or uh, disease breakout in the last year. Uh, so I'm confident uh, that I can just put them right into this tank uh, without any issues. So in a few minutes, we'll be back at the greenhouse and get them uh, put into their new home. All right, here we are, home sweet home get this fish in here in just a couple minutes.